James and Barbara Johnson, we're praying for you. And all that we're praying for you. And Reverend Gerald Williams at the church, we're praying for you. And to all our mothers on the motherboard and those that have not been for all of you, we're praying for you. Thank you. 
God. We are here to stop by every Lord, we need you. We can't get along without you. We all said that the need of your person. Some need to be healed this morning. Some need to be made whole again, Lord. Some need a peace of mind. Some need some joy. Some need to know that you are able, and we know and believe that you are able to heal all types of sickness and disease. So we ask you this morning to have that our way, Lord. We believe that someone cried out last night and couldn't sleep. Twist and turn all night because the storm was approaching them. Lord, we know that you're able to see and tell the storm to be quiet. We know that you're able to bring even to a troubled heart. And we ask right now in the name of Jesus. In the way in the name of Jesus. In the up of the name of Jesus, that you'll stop by. That you'll be a doctor in a sick room. That you'll be a lawyer in a cold room. That you'll reach out to God and you are in faith of the memory. That you will heal whatever you want through. So Lord, we pray that in the name of Jesus, you tell us every need should bow and every tongue confess. Knowing that you are able to see us through. We believe that you did it once, Lord, and we know that you can do it again. So we ask that you are healed, that you are touched, that you are known, that you will just allow your grace to be spread out among us today. We know your grace is sufficient for all our needs, and we just ask you to have mercy on our situation. Lord, I heard our late pastor say, my situation, Lord, is in your hand. We know you the power source and we ask that you'll be merciful to us. Lord, if you be merciful to somebody, I'm going to go out and say thank you. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for being our Savior. Thank you for being our everything we need. So, Lord, we just take time out and say thank you. We thank you for Jesus who came to give his life that we may live. So Lord, if we ask you to reach out and face our prayer, that you'll remember all the ones that was called in the sickness. Remember our mother, Lord. Remember Evergreen. Remember all those who are sick and shut in. Remember the city where we come from, Lord. Remember our state. Look over the world, Lord. And remember us being your children, Lord. And we can't get along without you. But we need your mercy. We need your compassion. But most of all, God, we need your love. So we ask you to be in our midst, the God in our midst, and we'll be very comfortable to give you the praise, yes. give you the glory. Yes. God is all yours. This we pray in Jesus' name. All God's people together said amen. 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 Thank you. 
in your mercy. Thank you, Father, for lifting our spirit. This morning, I'm going to be pitching. I might fall out, I might stretch. I might even hit a home run. But as you tell us, man, you got to be ready at all times. Always around in the bush. Someone asks, if there's any word from the Lord? Someone says, Yes, there is. So I praise God for the opportunity to stand before you. He says, It stayed on. Bring forth the word. It stayed on. It's over there right now. We're going to ask you to stand. I need you to help me sing a verse to this song. I need you. I want to take the lead, but I want someone to take the lead. Okay, is it is still on right now? Let's just try it. Don't work, pull it out. Down. 
feet out of your time. Wind it down. We ask you to pray along with us. Not tired yet, but there's still some room that we can improve upon. And said, so if we look at Genesis in the beginning, is in the beginning, man, lifespan was a long time. Men and women were living eight to nine hundred years. Brothers and sisters, that's a long time. The scripture recorded in Genesis that Methuselah lived 969 years. I, I can't imagine to live on the earth going through this period of time, or that period of time, to live 969 years. But the average day, this earth, man's lifespan is shorter than we think. About the average male is about 73.5, and men are not getting older. And I say for the women, it's about 73.5 years of age, but we know some of them will be much longer. But for the average man, it's about 72 years almost that in life comes to an end for us. But there are young, young people that are dying. Young. People are dying every day. Not just because of their weary and they're tired, but they're dying because of killing. I tell you this morning, time is winding down. In Noah's time, it said that the day of Noah were so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and Married and given unto marriage until that day that no one entered into the ark. Fact number one that the godly ignored God and became worldly and immoral. The godly. You don't know the God, those believers, those faith warriors that believe in Jesus. Uh, they, they became worldly and immoral. So these three things suggested three things that the human race began to multiply on the earth. It referred to both the godly and ungodly families on the earth. When the ungodly increased, so did they sin as well. More and more children were being born into the ungodly family, family that stressed the outward and word rather than the inward and spiritual. The more sin and comedy and get together, the more sin grows. And this is clearly seen when the people flock together in a large population center and ain't no God. When people get together for parties, and sometimes they forget who they serve. All of us like to party from time to time. And, and, and some of us as, as Christians, um, we let them get a little hold of that worldly stuff and, and when we go party, we know how to party. So it's called, I believe some of us Christians, we set the tone for the party. I believe we've been shut in so long and uh, sometimes we don't know how to act when we go to a party. And, uh, the more sin on the community, the more sin grows. This is clearly seen when God's people flock together. When we get together and party, uh, there's a time when we don't know that we are Christians. We forget that we are a child of God. Perhaps some of you parted last night. That's not here today. And some of us, when we party, you know, we have to, uh, since maybe some of us have to go way out of the way. We don't want to let, let the local folks know that we know how to drink. And Drink some of that good stuff. You know. Don't if you know how to get nothing out your purse right now, just <laughs> save it for the baby, you know. But, but some of us we, we have to dance and we forget what we are. And oftentimes, sometimes we'll bring that bottle to the church with us. And when you see church folks going in and out of the door, they're not getting friends or friends here all the time. I mean they're nipping off that bottle. 
just say that dancing and drinking and you know sometimes alcohol it loosens us up though. I didn't say that on myself. Sometimes alcohol can make you say things that you normally won't say. And some of you know what I'm talking about, right? I should have got a big amen out of that. You want to say it all the time, but you said alcohol made you do it. You ain't got to put it, just, just say, I, I did no more. So when we are around a crowd of people, it's more likely that if everybody else is doing it, we're going to do it ourselves. We are much bold to sin when it's a group. It is much easier to sin if someone else is doing it. No matter what it is. So the scriptures say when the wicked are multiplied, transgression increases. But the righteous shall see their fall. So in those days, the gods became worldly and immoral. They fed their minds upon sex and they did not control nor deny the immoral of sex urges. No, they began to notice the women of the world are fair, beautiful, and shapely, and, and that those did not follow God. You know, sometimes, I hate to say it, some of y'all, some of y'all do look pretty good. <laughs> y'all got some beautiful shapes, and, and, and even though we, we want to have a spiritual eye, but sometimes that that filler guy start coming up. I don't know about you, I, my eye is sometimes it's, it's bad, but sometimes it's, it looks at some pretty good stuff. And trying to get my focus off the thing. So that the day that's what was going on. Uh, they decided to look at the women of the world and and sometimes sister, y'all know how to throw us for a loop. I'm looking at some of y'all now, y'all. I'm gonna get it when you get out of here. So we need to know how to control our eyes and and the result for these people, they were tragic. You know? They were co-mingled with ungodly and they did all the commingling that everybody else involved. They were dating, they were partying. And they began to play around, they were touching and caressing and kissing and following and they were engaged in these sex. They looked and saw and fed their minds up on the worldly and they engaged in sexual morality. And, and they completely in, in, no, in no God and they went about doing their own thing, satisfying the lust of the flesh. They refused to control and deny they had a carnal lust among them. The godly ignored and rebelled against God. They married ungodly. They married all who they choose. You know, God tells us about being unequal yoke. You know, some of us, we hook up with folks that don't believe in Jesus. We, we hook up with folks that don't come to church. We hook up with folks that don't mean any good to nobody. And, and I, I say for some of you that go, and I know my grandson, he's locked up in jail, he's a nice little fellow. But I don't want none of y'all sisters running down to the prison and trying to get him. He ain't got too much to offer, come on. But I know some of y'all sisters, y'all run to the prison. And you act like you can't find nobody else. And you hook up with these folks that don't mean no good. So, so that uh, I'm giving you an attitude of what was going on that day that they were unequal yoke, and God tells us don't need to be unequal yoke with one another, especially unbelievers. And sometimes we believe that so we can change them. Some of us have tried all our lives. That's why we come to church by ourselves sometimes. Well, we can't change them. It only the God's word can change them. It weighs you out to try to change them and make them what you think they should be. So Christ tells them they were married and remarried time and time again. Lust was running wild. This was a lust among the God, the line of believers. The believer was turned away from God and began to live like the world. It was drinking and living like the world. The second fact that God became disturbed, there was a great, there's always, God always got great preachers that preach the word whether they want to hear it or not. Right. Noah preached for over 100 years. People still hear it right. 
Pastor Richard preached over 30 some years. Some people got it right and some didn't. Pastor Pika preached over 30 some years. Some got it and some didn't get it. I've been preaching for a long time. Some get it and don't get it. But that's the way it is. Sometimes great preaching change people and other times great preaching don't change people because people have made up in their mind that they're not going to accept God's word or then they're going to reject who we sent. So Adam well for 930 years, no doubt that he preached the gospel. He promised that a Savior would come. Enos preached and warned the people of the ungodly deeds and Enos was taken and Methuselah preached a long time and Noah was a preacher of righteousness. He warned the people to the very end. And his final analysis and witness and warning of the preacher was to no avail. Not for the masses of mankind. Because most people would refuse to heed the warning of God through their preaching. You know, we're not perfect. I'm not perfect. So I don't want, I don't want to be the judgment rod for your ministry, but you can look through me to see Jesus. He's a perfect example. I'm not a perfect example. I might be an example in something. You might be in something. But we're not perfect. But if you want to see somebody fall, is to look at me to see Jesus. And you'll see someone perfect. Because some of you said if there's a preacher can do it. So can I. Don't let me be your downfall. Let me encourage you with God's word and say, God's word is true. The way to the sin is still dead. But the gift of God is eternal life. And the result became very disturbed. And God gave them two warnings. God would withdraw his spirit. And the spirit would always not strive. You know, God would draw himself from us. Satan already got a foothold in the door already. In most of our lives. But God would withdraw his protection around from around us. Guess what happened? Satan take up. Give you all kind of false hope. Give you all kind of false illusion. That you can do this and you can do that. God don't mean what he said. That's what he, that's how he got out of me. God really don't mean what God means exactly what he said. So God said, look, I'm going to draw my spirit from you now and you're going to be on your own. The people were resistant. They were not listening to the voice of God. And they were struggling within their heart. They wanted to live with them. As Christians, we can't live the way we want to. Before you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, you can do anything you want to do. But when you make Jesus the Lord of your life, then you give him control. You can't do what you want to do. You think you can, but repercussion does fall. If you say, Jesus, I accept you and I make the Lord of my life, I want you to guide and direct me, then you're going to try to guide yourself. It's a shame when you deny who he is. So if you're going to walk with him, walk with him in a genuine way. Yeah. So God wanted them because they wanted to do their own thing. God, grace was limited. Judgment was coming. God gave Noah no another time. He gave him 120 years to do what? Get it right. To get it right. And you know, time is really winding down for all of us. Amen. We need to get it right right now. Tomorrow is not promised to any one of us. All you have is what you have today. So for 120 years, when Noah began to build that ark, Brother Curtis, I think they laughed at the storm. You know, we never had the rain, the rain that used to come up, Brother Griffin, just a mist from the ground. It never rained in those days. So it was hard to convince people that a great rain, a great flood is going to come. And all that time, over 100 and some years, they, they still make it right. He kept on building, yeah. kept on building, yeah. and when God said it was time, God acted up. God will give man one more chance. God never will give us a yeah. chance because he made us his creation. He loves us. Yeah. He don't want to see us uh, just, just, just out there lost. He wants to save us. That's why he sent his son into the world. Yeah. The third fact man became lawless as well as tomorrow. Because the first society was on the earth, 
The powerful and the strong always outweigh the poor and the needy. But for those of you who got money, you got influence. Hello? Help me, I know some of you all got some, some money, you got some influence. And you have influence a lot of our lives. Good or bad, you have. And it's not a bad thing, but, but, but when you encourage us to do the wrong thing, then God is not pleased with that. And you know what? The powerful, when they walk their way, they, they'll dominate society. In fact, God saw the wickedness of all there. But God see the wickedness. And you know what wickedness is. All of us got some evil among us. We got some things that we don't like about ourselves. And we know how to cause it to happen. And, you know, most of us, we have influence on somebody else. Some of you listen to me and some of you don't listen. But some, some of you listening, you take it for granted what I said, you act up on it. It's like this 45 minus 46 minus 1. He put out this conspiracy thing and folks in their right mind know that he lost, but they keep saying that he won. And perhaps some of you like that, you still believe that conspiracy thing, that something was stolen from you. No, 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 no. You lost. Period, you lost it. If you got 75 million, they got 85 million. You just lost. So it ain't no use of us keep saying a lie over and over again to make it sound right. So God saw the wickedness among the earth, and it means that the wickedness was multiplied. So man continued to sin more and more. Society was not getting better. Society was becoming more lawless and crime ridden. In every place you look, there was wickedness was there. But great wickedness does not only mean that sin multiplies, it also means that sin became extreme and terrible. You know, within the city of Oakland, and perhaps you live in a good city where crime is not, have not escalated, but keep on living. Just because you live in Dublin, White Hawk, Red Hawk, or wherever, and you know, uh, crime still exists. You go and peep on crime, they might not report it like Oakland, but they always put it. You're open with that, but crime exists wherever there's human beings in I, I live in a neighborhood where I don't have to have bars on my window, but keep on living. You got locks on your door. You got a alarm on your truck or your car. Crime can happen anywhere. anywhere. So sin became more vile and perverse and destruction and terrifying, more evil and devilish. More filthy and foul, more flesh and carnal. So God saw that every imagination of thought, whatever you thought about, you know, sometimes we can think about some evil thing and how to hurt one another. Amen. We, we can go to bed and think about evil. Now, I'm going to tell you a little story. I used to work in construction. Uh, this white fellow, he goes home and his cat killed a snake. Instead of him just throwing him to God, he called the snake to work with him and put him in my car. A rattlesnake. So I get ready to drive my little car and, and someone said, Rupert, you better look down. I look down between my legs and a rattlesnake curl up. Brother Curtis, I'm trying to get out of the car while the car is moving. I'm trying to jump out the window and open the door at the same time. I'm almost ready to have a heart attack. There's a snake between my legs. I don't know whether he's alive or not alive. That's my issue. I'm just trying to get out of the car because I know that was get killed. And I thought, what kind of man will go home and bring a snake and put it in my car? That's evil. That's wickedness. And I was in my I was the only black on the job. Some of you black, you can, you can agree. And the next time I go there is I had my lunch pill in the shack. And the guy brought some live traces and put it in my lunch box. And I, I was one day, I was talking about it. Trenches in my lunchbox. And they just having a time. And they just rolling on their side. They just having a good time. I said, I could have had a heart attack, man. But it, it, that, that's an evil, that's wicked. And some of you, so don't play with them. If you start playing with them, you open that door. They're going to go home and think about how I can get you back. I used to do some things in the military like that. I used to get some shoe polish and put it around a guy's nose. And, you know, 
y'all doing a little thing playful, but sometimes it gets out of hand. And when people try to retaliate, so all my life, as I look, I got to get this boy back. You know, you know, bought a snake and put it in my car. You know, bought a trench and put it in my lunchbox. I got to find a way to get it back, but I wasn't, I wasn't going home praying about how God would give me some ways to get it back. But one day he told me to rob my head to read out a strength of hope. I said, yeah, he said, well, you show me. I said, no, I can't show you the strength of hope. That's because you got to feel the effect of it. And he told me, show me that strength of hope. <laughs> one day I we got to eat lunch and I said, Lord, this fool done put a trench in my lunchbox. He done put a rattlesnake in my car. And, I, and he want me to teach him the strength of hope. Curtis got hit him so hard, he went down on his knees. He looked at Caucasian, and all the blood just seemed like they were going to pop out of his skin. And I said, Lord, I hit him too hard. But I didn't go to bed thinking about not going to get it, but I got it. And there was an instigator over here. Ron, you almost broke his neck. I thought about what he was done to me. But I was asking the Lord to forgive me because I thought I hit him. I could have killed him. But I wasn't trying to retaliate, but I thought about what he did to me. And sometimes when you think about how we try to get evil back at one another, sometimes we break the law. I really went too far. I wanted to apologize, and he gonna tell me, I'm gonna teach you some karate. I said, no, I got a gun, baby. You <laughs> ain't gonna teach me no karate. Next time I know I want to quit the job. I can't work on the job. The job was hostile now. Yeah. Yeah. So we got to show some compassion and build up a good of society. So we have a man, we have a sin nature. And therefore, we fail to sin all the time. And we cannot keep from sinning. And during wicked things, man is short of perfection. We always come up short of everything that we do. Man has a corrupt nature. Therefore, he contaminates. We contaminate. We pollute. We sour. We spoil. We hurt. Whatever we do or whatever we touch. And some of what, some of what Jesus said about some of us, about the evil nature man, the man is just like the salt that has lost its taste. Man is just like a corrupt tree that produces corru corrupt fruit. Jesus said, man is evil. Man's heart is hard. So hard that God has to grant some permissive commandment and deal with man. He said, man is not good. In fact, he said, there is none but one is good, and that's God. Man does not have the love of God in him. Man rejects God's Son and Jesus a man shall die in the sin. Man is blind and leading the blind. Yes, I can say today time is winding up. The fifth fact, God, God grieved over man and condemned man. God regret that he ever had babies. You know, God is our creator, he's our maker. And when he made man, he made man in a perfect image. Make man in his likeness. Now he calls up the corrupt and calls the wicked. And God said, It breaks my heart if I made it. I gave him a little intelligence, I gave him a little knowledge, and he thinks he out can outdo me. Some of us think we can tell God where to go and where to get off. So, so God said, Look, you're not made it. And he thinks he can outsmart me. And it grieved my heart that I made him. I weeping for him, and guess what? Man has called sin to be in all the universe, multiplying the misery and pain and destruction and injury and death. But the sixth fact I want to tell you, and I won't be with you long, that God remembered his grace. He preserved Noah. God could not violate his promises. When God made a promise to us, He's going to keep what he said he's going to do. Now we make a lot of promise. We make a lot of pledge. make a lot of commitment, but our commitment is not sure. Our commitment is not real. Our belief is not genuine, but when God makes a promise, 
He obligated to do what? Carry it out. Amen. So God found Moses, Noah found grace in the sight of God. But God had just pronounced judgment upon this terrible wickedness of man. Man was to be wiped out by the faith of the earth. You know, even though God loves us, God don't need all of us. God don't need you. He preached for over a hundred and some years, and it never got right. Curtis, I, I, don't, I don't believe I can live in, I don't want to live in a world where it seems like I don't want few believe and trust God. If all of us have what we have to believe and accept Jesus, it should be a hundred percent yes. But there, there, there might be a hundred percent negative in here. I don't believe it. And just because God had to come to your rescue, don't mean that he's not able. Those Hebrew boys, well, he's saved us, and I, I believe that he's able to see us through. Yeah. Just because God ain't bless you like he could bless you, then it don't want him down that he's not all powerful. He's still all powerful. He's still all knowing. He's all caring. He knows what's going on. He's omnipotent. He's on the front. He knows what's going on. You can't pull the wool, but God remember Noah. And Noah had to make sure his family lived righteous. Yes, sir. Yes. And I don't know how many people was in that day. I don't know how many people was in Noah's day, but say that, 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 that seems a million people. Out of a million people, only eight was saved. Is there something wrong with that man? Yeah, I mean, I mean your, your Bible said. It was just Noah, his three sons, and their wives, and the animals were saved. What do you think all the other people was doing? They still disbelieved him. They still don't trust. When he said a rain gonna come, he said, get right. And someone tell us to get right now because judgment is coming. There are those of you who don't believe judgment is coming. And just because you die is after the death, then what the judgment? Just because you die and get away from all the trouble here, and they are reckon each one of us is going to be judged according to what we've done. If you did right, he's going to come on over here. If you did wrong, he's going to separate you. So he had all those people, Brother Bill. I, I, I thought the scripture was wrong when I read it. Got all these people. And I'm a few of them believe you. So we take a survey this morning. How many of you think you'll be saved? You know you're saved without any question. Without any doubt. You know if you die right now, you know what you're spending time. Do you know that for sure? For some of us, we don't know. We say, well, Lord, I'm, I'm trying to get right. I'm trying to make it in. But surely if you die right now, you should know for certain what you're spending time at. If you're not sure, we need to go back to the plan of salvation all over again. I want to stir you up because time is winding down. It's it time to get right with God right now. Tomorrow is not promised to you. Why would I? I no, you ain't got tomorrow. You, you only got this moment right here. But God gave them the God and we do some of God on a second time, a second chance on them. Well, I serve God more than He gives us. When we fail, He gives us over and over again. He repeats over and over again. He continues to give us another chance. Surely for 120 years, I, we, we should have even got it right by now. But some of us have got old, our hair got gray, our hair's falling out, and we still ain't got it right. God don't mean it that way. God still said, the way to the sin is still dead. But the gift of God is still eternal life. So God promised Noah that he will gonna preserve his life. Therefore, God showered his grace and his favor upon Noah. God had mercy upon Noah, and Noah's chose to be the person. Can, you don't know, God might be, I've chosen you to be the leader of the next generation. You don't know that, do you? But if you're right, if you're righteous, God has to let you righteous. No, Noah, Noah was perfect, but he was perfect in his generation. Can you say I'm the only one perfect in my generation? That that what God said, Lord, He was perfect in His generation, and this is why God said He's going to destroy Earth, and why Noah and his family was the only one saved. 
This message this morning is a very descriptive message. Knowing the rest of mankind, why God destroyed the earth? Because of the wickedness of men. Do we see this in everyday life? We see this in me. We see it in you. We see wickedness in our family. We see wickedness on our job. Everywhere we go, that we can find, you don't have to look too far. And you don't have to look at me either. Because I believe there's a beam in your own eye. I might have a splint in my eye, but I believe that you have a splint in your eye. But you don't see your eye. But when the day of record is going to come, God will take you that night. So I say time is winding down. When we see it in the environment. We see fires are burning where they normally didn't burn. We got a thing we call global warming. We see there's a food shortage though. When we see we live in a drought condition. You see there's rain and lightning. Now very seldom we, we hear lightning and thunder on the California coast. Now you're in Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas, Florida. You hear that all the time. Flood in Oklahoma. But when the flood started in Las Vegas, Flood started in Indio in California. It's something about nature have changed. God is about ready to do something. We don't know what he's going to do. We can speculate that time is going to come and change. But none of us know. The scriptures say no man know the time or the hour when the sun. But, but if you speculate that, you, you know, the world thought it would come to an end in Norway, but it didn't come to an end. And the devil of the war is the root of the war that so many deaths have occurred. If the time has come to a close, you don't know when time is going to end. But you need to know that you need to be right when time do come to a close. Somebody asked the question, what would you do when God comes back? What do you find? What would you find you doing? Still cheating? Still lying? Still denying? Still denying? Still rejecting? What would you find you doing? Or will we find you doing things acceptable to him? You obey the law? What will he find? So I say this morning that time is winding up. Our kid, someone, child, is doing a lot of violent things. I'm saying we're afraid to go even outside. We're afraid to go to the store because there's somebody, child, doing some stupid stuff. And why are they doing that stupid thing? It might be your but it might be because of you. You've been disobedient to God. And God has let you see what disobedience brings. Sometimes God let us wallow in our little devil that we do. Sometimes it might be a child that acts up. Well, when you distrust God and, and you don't give him what he needs to do, he, sometimes he will allow to come at your front door. Might be your husband, might be your wife, might be your child. Might, he'll allow that to happen. To show you what you have got on face with that. We all have got on face with God. And God said, now the wicked that come before me. You know, I hate to see my sin come before God. So that's why I thank God for Jesus, that Jesus' blood covered my fault. Cover all my fault. But I'm not going to take for granted. There might be some, a little part of that they didn't cover. So God don't see our faults now, but he looks through his son. He sent his son to the world to save the world. Even though in those days they were they was dying out, you know, for amazing folks, and, 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 and I think about Curtis, because we, as, we have sympathy on one another. God said, no, it's time to get right. Get it in the heart. And every animal which you take your family. And you know who closed the door? God closed the door. God closed the door because you know some roof that you know I, I was I gave some bread when you didn't have no bread. Mm -hmm. I, I was a doctor for you when you didn't have no medicine. You know, you'll put that simple part on me. But when God closed the door, the door is closed. When he closed the door, that no man can open that door. But he still makes a way for it. Even though that catastrophe happened in those days, mm -hmm. same things that happen even today in our day. There's people that die on a long way every day. 
young people, there's old people down here. There, there, there's all kinds, we all got some issues. You know, if it's not melanin, it's filthy. We see babies can't get enough milk. Go to the grocery store, there's not enough, enough, enough food. Gas is too high. I'm saying, it seems like time is, is winding down. It might be. But it might go on this for another thousand years. You might not be in a witness, but, but God got a timetable for all this to come to a pass. He's the one that can open that door, and he's the one that can close that door. And when you see all this filth and all this unrighteousness going on, all this bickering and fighting in there, even in the church, when God sees all this, he says, look, it's time. But Jesus tells us, no man know the time. Not even me, I'm his son. That's a secret that only God knows. So when God gets tired of all of us, man, he's going to come knock on the door and say, get your house in order. He does send the people to tell us to get our house. He, he sent the everybody to tell us, God, get your house in order because you're going to die and not live. Thank God for prayer. Hezekiah yeah. was so sad he went and turned his face to the wall and began to pray. Well, we need to start praying right now. We need to start praying and quit playing. And ask God to come in and deliver us and show us the way. God has sent us a shepherd here. Now, I want to say this. God has sent us a shepherd here. You need to respect who he is and allow God to use him that he can continue to guide and lead us. Because God don't want us to perish. He wants us to come to repentance. So for those that you didn't go from, support him. For those of you who did, continue to support him. But, but don't put restraints on him. Don't handicap him. Don't strike him down. Pray for him. Amen. Because we believe the prayer of the righteous does what? Well, Fair as much. Are you going to pray for him? Are you going to pray for the church? Are you going to pray for yourself? Are you going to pray for your community? We need that. And when time gets ready to a comfort close, we're going to hear God say, Well done. Thou good and faithful servant. Brother Jordan, I want to hear him say to you, Rufus, you tried. You did your best. You showed him the way, you preached God's word, and you opened the doors for him. I want to hear his well done in spite of all that I did wrong. I want to hear God say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. You, you know, those words that this, that this can, can, can make us feel so uplifted when God said, well done. When God, when God, God said, well done about you, a God will change the part from me, you workers of iniquity. Time is coming to a close. And I'm, I'm not preaching that it's not, I don't know when it's going to happen, but God knows when the time is just right. The scriptures say, in Galatians, when the full of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman under the law, to redeem the devil. We are all under the law. But we don't have to do that anymore because God has sent his son into the world. Sent his world to change us that we can be where we are. And Jesus, I'm no longer in the world, but I give you a comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. He will teach you and bring all things you'll remember. But you got to have faith in him. you got to have trust in him. Jesus, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. The those should be comfortable word of all of us. you got a Savior. you got a God who loves you in spite of what you're going through. In spite of your sin for nature, he still loves you. He's still concerned about your well-being. He, he wants you to be somebody who's an actor from the body is to be present with him. I, I thank God for giving me another chance. Another chance to say, well done. I want him to bring him in the echo and say, well done. I've been faithful for a few things. Come on up a little higher and I'll make you ruler over anything. The battle is never easy. It's always hard. Paul said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. We need to finish what we started. We started with Jesus. 
we sure need to end up with Jesus. Don't start off in the church and end up in the gutter somewhere. If you start out with Jesus, be in part of Jesus and have no need. Our uh, absence from him and be somewhere in hell. So the course of being a Christian is not easy. Truly, we know, we know the part of, we know the feel, but he you know, giving us a way out. That way is repentance. When you do something wrong, fall on the knees of God, which is forgive you. I did something wrong, which will give me a clean slate. Which will give me a fresh start. You know, God will give you a new slate. He'll tell you now all things become new. You are a new creation in God when you confess your fault. He said, you confess your sin, he's faithful just to forgive you for all your sins and cleanse you from all your righteousness. But if you say that he's not a lie, you make him a lie, his word is not in We don't want to try to prove God's word is not. We all didn't know God's word is just. And God's word is right. And God's word is for me. And God's word is for you. Amen. 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 Time. The one and done. We need to get right. Get right now. Our blood is going to be born.
because none of us are perfect. But we're all striving for perfection through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to ask the speaker to come back, give us our closing words, and if there's any announcement, again, again. Thank you, Brother Brown. Thank you, Brother Brown. Amen. And since this morning, Brother Joe and us pray for your strength, pray for one another. Yeah. All lines are clear and announcement. Those of you tuning in by Facebook and YouTube Live, we pray that you receive a blessing today and hear by God's word. We invite you to come again on next Sunday at 11 o'clock. Be with Devil Green Baptist Church, 48 West Macaulay Boulevard. Pastor Bishop Brandon. Phone number is 510 654 2976. Let's remember, let's see at noon, Freddy Bible class, 6 30 Freddy Bible class. I was told that the funeral will be here on Thursday at 11 o'clock. All right, let's continue to pray for our officers, continue to pray for one another, continue to pray for the community. Amen. Let's understand, God has spoken. Go ahead and enjoy the balance of the day in peace.